the last bit I just wanted to um, look at was the, the question around tethers. Because um, I can see an argument in both directions on this side of things. So again, to, to clarify for the audience, there's essentially two, uh, two, two approaches to head-mounted uh, devices. Um, obviously, there's a bit of weight in there. And when we add that into something that sits on top of a hard hat uh, for all day usage, reducing weight is is um a, a, a goal i suppose um so one option is to tether that device um and and to have what a battery i suppose it's the battery and the cpu that's where the weight is so to have that in a breast pocket or jacket pocket that's that's a that's a tethered device and then you've got a non-tethered device which is the way you guys approached it where everything's encased in the one mounted what what drove you to go with the the latter option? Um, what are the pros and cons of each? Well, good question. Um, the primary reason to think about a tether is to take weight off the head, as you said. Uh, most of the weight that you're going to find is in the battery. So the bigger the battery, the more use you get out of it, but the more weight. And so a lot of people want to say, well, we'll, we'll put a small battery on the headset, and then we'll have a cable coming down here next to battery pack, for example. Uh, we've always decided, we've always deemed that many of our enterprise industrial customers do not want additional cables coming down from the head to a belt worn device. Uh, cables can be snagged, they can be dangerous, um, and also just couple up when you're turning your head. If you turn your head this way and the cable's tight around here, it can pull. So we've never liked cables, and we've always decided that from day one we would go without a cable. Um, so that means but on the other hand, we didn't want to shy away from a small battery either. We wanted to design a device, remember from day one, that this is a tool for the workers of the front line. And that really means we always should have a battery to support an 8-12 eight to 12 hour shift. And I don't want to have to stop work halfway through my day and go back and replace a battery. So that's just a design choice you make. And in a way, by saying from day one, it's got to support 8-12 to 12 hours of life and it's going to be worn on the head, but that really dictates the ultimate form factor. The battery is one of the biggest components, and to support that we have all this other framework around it. But the good news is it's distributed nicely around on a hard hat, so you don't feel the weight. Uh, but if you want to get around that, yes, by all means you put it in, in, a, in a pocket and you have this cable. Yeah, but that, like, I mean, for me, I'm just thinking, it's almost going back to the case of binocular versus monocular, and, and making sure that the engineer is in the moment, in the present, when, they, when they're supposed to be focused on what they're doing, the last thing you really want is them to be distracted by additional movement. But I would imagine also, like, if if, if they're that tether, it's kind of, again, it's it's kind of feed, I'm, I'm starting to understand how you guys approach some of these, these considerations. It's the same point as the, the touch. If there's a tether, it's gonna get knocked out, surely. Um, and, and, and the kind of tether that would need to power such a device, I would imagine, wouldn't be something like, um, you know, a, a light USB cable. It'd be something fairly weighty, which is going to mean it's going to be, there's a good chance of it either snagging or unplugging, in which case, do we not get back to the point where the engineer's like, right, plug back in, log back in. It all comes down um, to the I'd imagine understanding the market you're in and where we're targeting it on set. Yeah. If I am looking to sell or design a headset for, uh, say, professionals, prosumers, uh, doctors, nurses, for example, then maybe the super lightweight is more important and a tether is acceptable. Mm. But if I want to design for my heavy industry, no tether. Yeah. And weight is not an issue because it's now distributed around the headset. And the more important, back to your very first conversation, form versus function. I need to just have this work all day, and it's a tool. So I think a lot of the design choices are valid when they're applied to the right market segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, again, it, it's it's coming back to a lot of the fundamental choices. It, it's the fit for purpose. Again, conversations I'm sure every uh, service director, every manager, every everybody on the call um, watching the, using the old language there, but everyone watching the presentation, the video, um, we live in an on-demand world, but I'm I'm from a I'm from a, a time when you had to tune in to watch. Well, that, that's um, 
But everyone will understand that kind of fit. I suppose it, even things like the TCO, you know, the total cost of ownership, that comes into the rugged side of the conversation, fit for purpose. It's essentially taken a lot of these concepts that we're quite comfortable with in field service, but understanding that we need to apply those when we're thinking about a new technology, a new interface, um, and also then understanding, I suppose the big question is, that, that everybody on this call needs to understand is, it's not just about that ability to deliver service remotely and, and get that expertise in remotely, which we see coming from the software side. It's what value will your engineers being able to work an eight to 12 hour shift with their hands completely free, what value will that bring? How quickly will that increase uh, mean time to resolution, the, te the, the technician utilization, the ability to get first time fixed, all of those things that we know are important, how, imp how, how much of an uplift will, um, the ability to work hands-free kind of increase that efficiency. Um, I suppose the final question I'd put to you, Chris, is, is just to kind of, um, it, A, to give us a little bit of a, a, a summary of, of how, how rapidly you think um, this this is going to evolve now. Because like we said at the beginning, um, COVID-19, the greatest disruptor, certainly since the Second World War, certainly in my lifetime. Um, and And... We, we, we've seen digital transformation move in a huge path. We've seen an acceptance of remote service delivery um, really kind of boom as well. Um, and the technology, my, 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 my kind of leaning at the moment is we people keep talking about the new normal. People keep talking about what, where we're going to be as if it's some kind of revolution um, and, and a huge change, sea change. And I think there will be a, a very big sea change for an awful lot of companies, awful lot of ways of doing things. But actually, I think we were just on that path anyway. We just got there a heck of a lot faster. Um, I'd love to just get your final well, thoughts on that. We've definitely heard from enough customers now who said, this has been great accelerant of COVID, but when COVID's over, if it's ever over, we're not going to go back to the way things were. This is the new normal, use that phrase you've used already. A lot of people said, you know, we've proven that remote work does work. The cost savings of not jumping on a plane and running off to customer science every day, it's huge. And so I think people are now, uh, we've proven the technology, other competitors coming to the field, bigger companies coming to the field as well, getting involved. In fact, we've been involved with Microsoft. Microsoft has stand, stood up and said, this is frontline worker solutions. Cisco doing the same. They're all adding to the validation that this is real and this is here to stay. I think that is a reality. And what we'll see over the next few years is a number of different headsets. We won't be the only uh, supplier of head-worn computing or smart glasses because really there is a it's a pair of smart glasses for every different vertical market out there. So if we stay, we play in our industrial rugged space, people like Google Glass are still selling that into lighter industry, into professionals. You know, HoloLens will continue to do its thing and they all have a place to play. There is no one-size-fits-all in this head-worn stuff. It's very personalized and very fit for purpose. So I think we'll see a more crowded playing field as the big companies come in and validate this and it will become the new way of working.